Okay, so uh, to introduce, my name is Ian Holmes. Uh, as assisting me today is Tom Armitage. Tom's going to be answering the questions that come through. Um, and today we're going to look at creating 3D models using the data from Digimap. We're both part of the geoservices support team here at Adena. So after the webinar, uh, you'll get an email. Hopefully we'll send the email out tomorrow, uh, 24 hours after this. Uh, we're recording this webinar. And we'll stick that on YouTube. Also, any slides that we covered today, we'll put those uh, online as well. A transcript of any questions and answers that are asked during the webinar. And we'll also send you a link to a feedback form because any feedback is really useful to us uh, when we try to develop more webinars. So today, uh, like I say, we're going to look at creating simple 3D models using the data directly out of Digimap. We're going to look at some of the common packages. Uh, they're listed here, ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS Online a couple of the Autodesk products, that's AutoCAD and InfraWorks, and finally we'll finish up with QGIS. Before we actually get going on this, it would be really useful to know what software everybody uses, so we're just going to launch a quick poll. Um, if I set this off, you should get some tick boxes there. Please tick all that apply. If you use something that's not listed in that list, uh, please let us know in the question section, just so we've got a record of it, because um, it's really useful for us to know what people are using so that we can tailor our help materials and our documentation to the most common software. Obviously, it's not possible to produce uh, materials for every software, because there are so many these days. But, uh, okay, we'll just give this a couple more seconds, and then we'll share the results okay that's most people answered so I'll just quickly share the results so you can see so we've got quite a mix quite a few people using ArcGIS Pro which is good to see because that's fairly new and Autodesk and yeah good good spread there and thanks for anybody that's uh, filled in the other stuff as well we'll take a look at the comments on that okay so the first thing we're going to look at today the first one we're going to look at is ArcGIS Pro um, we're going to do two separate examples. The second one will feed into ArcGIS Online, but the first one is a really simple one. We're going to look at some geology data. So we've downloaded the 1 of 50,000 geology data from Digimap. We're going to look at the bedrock uh, for an area of the southwest of Sky, so the Coolin Ridge and Sky. Uh, the process is there on screen, but I'll talk through that in a little bit more detail. Um, so we're just going to fire away straight ahead into it. So this is ArcGIS Pro. I've just opened it beforehand. I'm just going to create a brand new blank project. Uh, I'm going to give it a name, and save it in my webinar folder. Oops, it wants to go in there. Okay, uh, create a new folder for it. So ArcGIS Pro is Esri's latest, oh, it's said next generation of desktop GIS. Um, it was released a couple of years ago now, so it's gone through a few different versions, and uh, the really good thing about it is that it integrates 2D and 3D mapping into a single interface, whereas previously if you used ArcMap, you had to use something like ArcScene or ArcGlobe to see it in 3D. Okay, so this is our project interface. We're going to create a new map, uh, so you want to see the data on a map. Um, and because we're connected to the internet, I'm logged into this and we're connected to our internet here in Edinburgh. Uh, it's pulled in a base map, so this is a base map provided by Esri and they've called it topographic. So we've got some nice basic data. When you zoom in, you get more and more detail. So I'm going to go into my webinar folder and we've got our 50k geology data. So this was downloaded from Digimap. Um, not done anything to it. It's provided by the BGS in shapefile format but they also provide a .lyr file as well for styling. So I'm going to add the layer file so that we get some nice uh, colors, and these use the official BGS color schemes. And one of the nice things about geology data is it's got really nice colors, so they're nice and vibrant colors, so it looks really nice on screen. Okay, so I'm um, just going to check that we're in British National Grid. So all the data out of Digimaps in British National Grid, so... It's got the right coordinate system there, just before we go any further. Okay, so there's our data. The Coolin Ridge runs around uh, through here in Sky. But what we're going to do is try and visualize this data in 3D. And it is really, really easy. You just go to the View menu item at the top, and you press this Convert button. And because this is using Esri's, uh, Esri software, which is internet-enabled, they've got the terrain data already available uh, in, in their systems and they can call that directly so I've only added the geology data to this but when it uh, catches up there so it looks just the same at the moment but if I zoom in a little bit and then if I tilt the map using 
uh, the middle mouse button here, you can see that we can see the terrain now in three dimensions. So this terrain data, I've not loaded this into the map. This has been pulled in directly from ArcGIS Pro. So they've got terrain data for the whole globe loaded into ArcGIS, and they can call that and pull that in. So for the UK, they use OS Terrain 50 as their main product. Um, which is the open data version provided by Ordnance Survey. So here it's really nice, you can see it. All I've done is add the geology data to it and you can pan and browse around and move the map and you can see it in 3D. It's really nice with the geology data because you can see how the landscape affects the, uh, so the, how the geology, sorry, affects the landscape. One thing you can do that's really nice is if you choose the bedrock and go to the appearance tab, you can actually vary the transparency of it really nicely using this little slider. So if we set this around 50%, so you can see the geology now and how that's affecting the, the landscape uh, beneath that. So that's a really simple uh, model, just to show you that with a click of a button, so the convert button, created as a nice 3D image uh, of that geology data in there. What we're going to do this time is we're going to uh, create a new project and do some uh, 3D modeling of Edinburgh City Centre and then we're going to load it up into ArcGIS Online. So we're going to start uh, in ArcGIS Pro again and this is slightly more complicated. So if I uh, create a new project, call it Edinburgh 3D and we'll put it in my webinar folder. So Edinburgh. Okay, so for this project, uh, this one we're going to show you, the data source we're going to look at in this one is the master map building height attribute data. So this was a data set produced by Ordnance Survey. It, it, uh, it's part of master map effectively. It's still a beta release, but it's been available for a couple of years now. And I've downloaded this from Digimap in the geodatabase format, file geodatabase format, which we can read Oops. <coughs> into, uh, into our ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so we start with a new map again, just like before, and we'll check that we're in British National Grid once we've added some data. So first thing we do is add some data. This time we're going to go to our Edinburgh folder, and this is our file geodatabase that contains the building data. We've actually downloaded, when you download building height data, it comes in um, small tiles. We've actually taken two tiles and merged them together and just clipped out a small area from the middle. So that's what the building's merge feature is. That's the only processing that's happened to this, uh, this data set. So tile boundary falls right down the middle through Edinburgh Castle here. So in order to show you something a bit more interesting, we've uh, taken a very small area and merged the two tiles together. Okay, so here's our building data. Uh, if you scroll in, you'll get the, the detail. This is taken from our OS master map. It's effectively provided as building footprints together with a bunch of height attributes. Uh, let me just check we're in British National Grid, which we are, that's all fine. Okay, so the height attributes you get with master map, building height attribute, you get three. You get a base height, the absolute minimum, then you get two roof heights. So one's effectively the eaves, and one of them is the absolute maximum value of the physical feature of the building. And from that, they've derived two relative values. So we're going to use this relative H max uh, when we extrude our features. <clears throat> so in order to see this in 3D, um, we go to the view and we click on the convert button again. So this will create us a nice 3D scene of this area. Um, but at the moment, the building features will be flat. They will just appear flat on the, uh, on the land surface. Again, the land surface we're using here is the, the one provided by Esri, so that's the OS Terrain 50. If you wanted to, you could load in OS Terrain 5 from Digimap, which is a more detailed data set. If I just zoom in and tilt the map, I have to wait for my computer to catch up. Bear with me. Okay, so you can see we've got Edinburgh Castle sitting on the mound here on the rock but all the buildings are just lying flat on the surface at the moment. That's because they're being shown in 2D. If we click and drag this buildings layer into the 3D section, we then give the system, we give these features the ability to become 3D objects, but we still have to tell ArcGIS Pro <clears throat> how to build the 3D features from this. So we've got to tell it to extrude them and give them some height information as well. So here they come in. So now if we go to the appearance uh, menu item here, 
we have this drop down and we can extrude these features. Um, we're going to choose max height, that's just the base value that we're going to add the height onto, and then we're going to choose that rel h max, which was the attribute from our uh, building height data from OS, so it's this, this value here. So we're plotting to the very top of the highest physical feature on these, on these buildings. Okay, so here we go. So now we've got our 3D buildings. Um, we can pan and zoom around and you can see the area. Edinburgh Castle sits on top of the top of the rock here um, and some of the other big, bigger buildings lower down. <clears throat> now with this, you can obviously change the representation. These have just been pulled in with a default brown color. On the symbology tab, if you wish to change the color or change the, the texture of them, you could do that. You've got all the power of ArcGIS Pro there. But what we're gonna do now is take this data and visualize it in ArcGIS Online. So, to do this, we've got to go through a couple of particular steps. The first one um, is to create what's called a multi-patch feature. So, in the 3D features, so I've got another one, 3 hours tools, conversion, we've got layer to feature class here, 3D feature class. And this tool is going to create us what's called a multi-patch feature. So, we're going to choose our buildings, It'll give us a default value for the output feature class. And we're just going to hit run. So this will take a few uh, moments just to run. But a multi-patch feature basically is a, a 3D feature that's got sides and it's got a top and it's got a bottom. At the moment, these building features are just an outline with a height value. So they've just got an attribute value that we've extruded to. But in order to see this data in 3D in ArcGIS Online, you need to create a physical 3D feature that's got walls and it's got floors and ceilings. Okay, so that tool's run, and our features look just the same. Um, the second part of this is we have to run a separate tool, which then creates um, a scene layer package, which is something that ArcGIS Online can uh, display. So this one lives in the data management tools, and then in package. Uh, and we're going to create a scene layer package. Scene layer is the terminology that Ezra used for their 3D scenes in ArcGIS Online. So we're going to choose our multi-patch feature layer there, and we're going to give our uh, scene layer package a name and choose where to put this. So we'll call it, we'll put it in here. We'll call it number 3D. So that should put the right extension on it, and we're just going to hit run. Right, this can take a little bit longer to run. Um, so whilst that's running, we're going to go over to RGS Online and show you the next uh, next steps. Okay, so just back to my web browser. So this is me. I've logged into RGS Online here, and I've gone to the My Content tab, so at the very top here. Um, we've got one in here that I created previously whilst testing, but we're going to add a new one that we've just created now. So if I go back. Okay, so it says it's created our scene layer package successfully. Oops. I go back to here, and we're going to add an item from my computer, and we're going to browse to that package file that we've just created. So Edinburgh 3D, Edinburgh scene layer package open. We have to give it some tags so that people can find it if you decide to share this in the future, but it won't share it by default. So this now is adding that particular file, this little package file, into ArcGIS Online, and it will create what they call a, a service so that you can actually view it through the web. Um, so once it's into the system, so here it is, it's, it's showing us the default page. Um, You've got options here for adding more information. So with ArcGIS Online, you have the ability to share data and share things with different people. So if you want people to be able to view this, you might want to add some description information or some access constraints. People can add comments as well if it's shared with them. And you've got a brief uh, summary at the very top here. So there's lots of control in ArcGIS about what people can do and, um, and how they can interact with things. Um, so... That should have finished, so we'll just click on the scene viewer. Here we go. So it's going to zoom to our area. So here's our multi-patch features. 
hopefully this will be recognizable and again if we scroll in and if we tilt the screen you'll see we've got it in 3d so we're now viewing this data live online uh, i could log in from anywhere in the world use my account and we'll be able to get to this data so it's not stored locally it's stored in the cloud somewhere um, and it's a really nice way of being able to display the data and share it with pe people if you wish one of the one of the nice tools that you've got in arcgis online is you've got this daylight option as well so you can see shadows for, for buildings for features so if i turn these on you've got some controls here so at the moment it's pulled in a, it's showing us the shadows that you get on march 15th this year at uh, 12 12 p.m but you can change this you've got a nice slider so you can see how the shadows would uh, change over the day if you want to choose a different day so let's choose today see how the shadows are it's not actually very sunny here today but uh you see the shadows are how they are. So if you wanted to do a, 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 a project on uh, the impact of development, for example, you can create your features in 3D through ArcGIS Pro, put them into ArcGIS Online, and you could look how the shadows of your proposed development would affect uh, neighboring properties during the day. Okay, so that's a quick look at uh, ArcGIS Online. What we're going to do now is jump over to some of the AutoCAD products, some of the Autodesk products. I'm just going to close these so that, we, so that our computer runs so fast. I'm just going to start AutoCAD. So we're going to look at two different ones in AutoCAD. The first one we'll look at uh, just straight AutoCAD, and the second one we're going to look at uh, InfraWorks. So we've got a few different data sets. In the first one, we're going to look at OS Terrain 5 contours and the Mastermind mastermind building high attribute again and in the second one we're going to look at uh, the mastermind raster as well and we've got aerial imagery for the second one as well so here comes autocad so autocad uh, there's loads of different cad applications available and they all do 3d so we're going to look at autocad because it is freely available under their student license so anybody as a student can download the latest version um, so it is, it is freely available. So here we go. We're going to go to an area of, of Hexam this time. So this is our building height attribute data. It's been downloaded from Digimap in DWG format. And we're just going to open it up just in straight AutoCAD and see the data that we get. So here we go. We've got, we've got Hexam because it's, uh, it's built on a bit of a hillside. It's a fairly small, compact town. So the data files aren't too big in terms of their file size. So it renders fairly quickly. Um, so here's the data. It's the building footprints again. Um, and if we zoom in to a bit of it, and and if we turn it on its side, so hopefully you'll see that it's on a bit of a hillside. You can see the, the ground sloping up here, and you've got all the, the buildings displayed nicely in 3D. So we've done the processing on this. This is this has come out of Digimap, and uh, we've created 3D building features in DWG format. So I've not had to do any processing after downloading this. Now, in order to see this, uh, we can attach a surface. So these buildings effectively appear like they're floating on a, on a surface. What I'm going to attach is the contour file that sits underneath this. So this is OS Terrain 5 Contours. And I'm going to attach it. So I've gone to the Insert Attach command here. And because we've created these files, uh, our Digimap has created all these files, we've done a lot of work to make sure they all align correctly and they all use the same coordinate system which is British National Grid and they all use the same units which is meters so we can tick this locate using geographic data box here and when we uh, attach this uh, contour file they'll drop in right underneath the buildings right in the right place so you see we've got these contours now uh, the major contours are drawn in red and the minor ones are, are drawn in grey I just zoom out a little bit so you can see how now we've got buildings that actually sit nicely on the surface uh, of our of our landscape there so that's a really simple visualization using autocad uh, and you should be able to do that with any of the dwg data sets that comes out of digimap to do a slightly more uh, involved um, model we're going to have a quick look at infraworks so with InfraWorks, we're going to use uh, a couple of other data sets as well. So we're going to look at the aerial imagery data. It's not actually listed on here. Apologies for that. And we're going to look at the master map raster as well, which is the detailed mapping data from Ordnance Survey, together with those buildings that we've just seen. Uh, InfraWorks is um, it's a nice it's a nice bit of software because it lets you create um, models for sort of planning and design scenarios and it supports drag and drop so it's really easy to create, create a new model so i'm going to put my 
model in this folder. I'm going to call it hexam. We're going to look at the same data effectively here. So I some 3D. And the only thing I'm going to change is that it's going to use British National Grid as our coordinate system. Because like I said before, all our data uh, from Digimap is, well, from Ordnance Survey Digimap is provided in British National Grid. Okay, so let me just jump to my hexam folder. So these are the different data sets we've been looking at today. And I said before, this supports drag and drop. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag in a terrain surface. So this .asc file is our OS Terrain 5 DTM that I downloaded from Digimap. Just going to click and drag it in. It's really, really easy. And it's picked up the fact that it's a terrain data set and it's in British National Grid. I don't need to do anything to this other than press the close and refresh button. And this will draw our DTM. And... As it comes in there, you can start to see the river systems that form in the area. There are hexams in this area, I think, of this particular tile. So we've got a slightly raised area across the top here. Now, to give it some context, we'll drop our buildings on. So uh, that's building height attribute again, which is just our DWG file downloaded directly from Digimap. Again, okay, click and drag that on. This takes a little bit longer because it has to process all the individual features in this file. So. This is around six megabytes in terms of its download file here. If you chose an area of central London, then it, it would uh, it would be a lot denser in terms of its buildings and its file size could be a lot bigger. So if you're doing 3D modeling like this, it's always best to choose a smaller area as possible and potentially chop out just the buildings that you want um, through some other software. So we'll just give that a few more seconds to run. Yeah, right, and it's prompting me to say, what sort of object is this? <clears throat> uh, there's a bunch of options, but buildings is one of the options. So we're going to tell them it's buildings, and they're in British Grid, and we'll close and refresh. So this will draw our buildings on top, and then we can have a quick look, see how they appear in the in the landscape. Okay, here we go. So there's our buildings, uh, Hexham Town Centre's around here, if we just zoom in over here and... Zoom in a bit and turn it into 3D. So now we can see, like we were looking at before in AutoCAD, we've got this uh, hill, hillside at the side here. But we've got all our buildings and they're really detailed outlines from building high attribute data. Okay, so to give this a bit more uh, meaning as, a, as an area, as a model, we're going to add in some map data. So here we've downloaded from Digimap, we've got OS Master Map uh, in raster format, and it comes in as a bunch of separate tiles. So there's 25 tiles of this data. Um, we're going to, it's not terrain, it's not actually ground imagery, I accept that, but we're going to treat it as ground imagery because it's effectively a raster map. It's British National Grid again. And we'll, oh, with the, we're just going to change one value there, which is gamma correction, which just means that it doesn't come in all washed out. If you leave it as a default value, it comes in, it looks a bit washed out, whereas if you just modify that slightly, it comes in with much, much richer colours. So here we go. We've got our buildings now on top of the detailed mapping from Ordnance Survey. And if we zoom in, you'll see that the building features, our 3D building features, do align perfectly with the mapping data because they effectively come from the same source. So it's, it's, a, it's a perfect match. And uh, you, you can see I've only spent a few minutes doing this, and it's a really quick way of building up a nice 3D model of an area. So if you want to plan a development or something like that and see the impact on the environment, then you can do that really quickly. Now I'm just going to remove that mapping data, and we're going to add in the aerial imagery, because that's another really useful data set when you're creating 3D models. The aerial imagery comes from Aerial Digimap, which is our newest collection. Uh, it, the actual data comes from Get Mapping, um, who are the... The provider for this, it's ground imagery and it's British National Grid. And I'll add this in. Um, it's 25 centimetre aerial imagery, so it's really detailed. Um, and it's updated, well, we get at least one update every year um, over time. And it's provided in JPEG format. So here we're adding the different tiles. They're slightly bigger than the master map raster files, which is why it's taking a little bit longer to process. But it doesn't take that long. Um, and we'll see a nice uh, realistic landscape once this has all come through. Okay. So there's our, there's our aerial imagery, and once that's finished rendering, we'll get our buildings on top. So 
there we go again I've clicked and dragged all these things, all these data sets in. I've not had to do any processing on this. Uh, it's just been taken from Digimap and dragged and dropped into InfraWorks. And you can see it's a really quick way of creating a nice 3D model of an area. In this case, now we've got the aerial imagery, whereas before we had the, uh, the mapping data beneath. And yeah, so Autodesk supports all the digital data formats in DWG that you can get from Digimap as well. So. You can view all these in there. So the last one we're going to look at is QGIS. And we're going to go to uh, Battersea Park down in London. So whilst QGIS is just loading up in the background, uh, here's a list of the data sets we're going to look at in this one. So we've um, yeah, we've looked at all of these before, apart from master map topography layer, which I've extracted two different features, just specific features out of this. So for the positioned coniferous trees and the non-coniferous trees. So that data was downloaded in file geodatabase format and just using QGIS, just did a quick extraction on the two feature codes and saved them off as a shapefile. So we've got two separate shapefiles of that. The rest of the data is just as it was downloaded from Digimap. So the majority from the Ordnance Survey collection um, and then the aerial imagery from the aerial collection. <clears throat> and there's a quick overview of the process, but we'll go through that in a bit more detail in QGIS. Okay, so we're going to create a new project, and we're going to add some data to this. So before I do this, I'm going to set the projection. So again, we'll enable on the fly. We're going to set this to British National Grid, because we're looking at London. And we're going to add our data to this. So the first thing we're going to add is our terrain surface. So again, that's the Ordnance Survey Terrain 5 DTM, the ASCII file. And there it is. So there's the River Thames going through the middle here. Now Battersea Park is this section here. And the power station's over here somewhere. Now on top of that, we can drop some aerial imagery. So these are all JPEG format files. I believe it's asking what projection they're in. So they're all in British National Grid, so we just need to click this for the... There's nine tiles that we're bringing in here. And you'll see them appearing in the map window behind. Okay, I'm just going to group these into a layer so that we've got a slightly easier control over turning on and off. And I'm going to rename the DTM as well, just so that we can control it a bit better when we create a 3D model. So. So give it a slightly more sensible name. So if we zoom to this group, so this is the data we've got. So here's Battersea Park and the power stations, this, this feature here. Now, on top of this, we can drop our building height data. So this was downloaded in file geo database format from Digimap. So we'll just browse to that. So here it is. I'll open that. Now it's stuck it in my imagery. Let's just pull it out. Okay, so you can see the buildings now. They sit nicely on top of the building features in the in the photography below. And yeah, there's a power station. And now the last couple of things we're going to add is our trees. So I said I'd extracted these as shape files, so the coniferous and non-coniferous trees as shape files. So we'll add these two into the into the map. Again, let's drop them into my imagery. Let's take them out there. Okay, so these, so in um, in OS Master Map Topography Layer, they, there is a feature class for positioned and non uh, positioned coniferous and positioned non coniferous trees. Typically, these are where there's individual trees. So here, the classic case is where they've been positioned along a walkway or a driveway or something like that. Obviously, you can see in this map there are other trees in the area that aren't appearing as positioned ones. That's because this would in master map this would be a polygon which would be classed as a bit of woodland for example so all these other ones are where they've positioned them so the the darker purple ones on the screen here are the non-coniferous and the lighter colored ones are the coniferous ones so there's a few coniferous ones in this area so we're going to use this to style the uh, the 3d model so that's all our data added now before we can um create our our model what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate these tree features. So, because we want to add trunks and we also want to add tree canopies. And the easiest way is to duplicate these. So with them highlighted, we can choose duplicate. And then I'm just going to rename this so that I know what's a trunk and what's a canopy. So we've got 
trunks for coniferous trees and we'll have trunks for our non coniferous trees. Admit. Right. So they're just duplicates of the same shape file. We've just got it in there twice effectively. So one shape file, but we're displaying it twice. Now I'm going to turn everything off apart from the aerial imagery because all the other features are going to be rendered in 3D. So our buildings and our trees are going to be dropped on top of this in the model. Now to create the 3D model, we have to use a plugin. So there's a free plugin called QGIS to 3JS and uh, it lives in the web menu once it's installed and it allows you to create a 3D model. So we're going to go through this interface now and, and specify the different elements. So our digital elevation model is correctly uh, guessed the, the uh, raster there, which is the Terrain 5 DTM. Now our buildings and our trees that we're going to drop on top of this um, are, are these options here. So we need to enable all these. The first one we're going to do is our buildings. So at the moment, uh, these are just going to be flat features, but what we're going to do is we're going to extrude them uh, on top of the DEM, and we're going to give them a colour, so we'll just set a colour of a sort of grey tone, just so we can see them, and we'll set a value for 25% transparency, so we can see through them. So if it, they appear like sort of uh, semi-opaque uh, greenhouses, effectively. Um, instead of giving them a fixed height, we can actually use this rel h max attribute value. And if you wanted to apply a multiplier so they were slightly taller than reality, you could do that through here as well. So that's our building. So this should display as grey um, with a slight bit of transparency at their true height. Now for our trees, we've got our trunks and our canopies. So our trunks, we're going to create as cylinders. Um, again, they'll be sitting on top of the DEM. Um, we're going to give them a colour of brown. So we'll give them a nice dark brown colour. If you, wanted to, if you wanted to use the style that was set on the object, then you can do that. You can set all the colors through the interface, but I'm just going to do it through, uh, through the plugin instead. So yeah, there's a brown color selected. I'm not going to make them transparent. I'm going to give them a radius of 1. So that gives us a circumference of 2. And we'll give them a height of 5. So these are all in map units. And we're going to do exactly the same settings for our non-coniferous tree trunks as well. So a cylinder make them brown, radius of 1 and a height of 5. So now for the, the fun part with the trees is the canopies. So for our coniferous trees, we're going to use the cone. We're going to project these up as a cone. Their base height, we don't want them to sit on the floor, so we're going to give them a base height of 5, so they sit off the floor a bit. We're going to give them a dark green colour, because coniferous trees tend to be a, a darker green. Sorry. Yes, I'm doing this right. I was thinking, getting confused between coniferous and non-coniferous. That's right. Yes, they're a darker colour. Our radius, we're going to do, just going to set them all the same size. But if you had real tree data and you had um, actual values of canopy size, then you could use these if you'd done a survey of these. So we're going to a height of 25 and a radius of 10. For our non-coniferous trees, we're going to use a sphere, so we're just going to display these as a big ball. We're going to put these off the ground a little bit. So that's the centre of the ball, how high we want that to be. So we've set that 12.5 metres. We'll give this a slightly lighter green colour. We won't have any transparency. And we're going to do a radius of 12.5. Okay, so once you've got all your attributes set up, all your values set up, you hit the run button. And what this does, it runs away, it interprets everything that you've put in there, and it um, generates a standalone set of um, files and the 3D element of this is an HTML page so in any modern web browser uh, it's able to, to read this data and you can interact with it through the through the web, web page so here we go so you can obviously run that tool as many times as you want I've obviously had to go through it a few times to get all the settings uh, settings right and appear okay so you see if, as, as we zoom in We've got our tree trunks, so there's our two meter circumference tree trunks and our spherical balls for our coniferous trees and our cones for our, sorry, our non-coniferous trees and our cones for our coniferous trees. Our buildings are displaying as grey. If we just spin the map around, you can see Battersea Power Station over here. So here's the iconic uh, towers of Battersea Power Station, the four chimneys. They're not standing out very well at the moment because we set some transparency on this, but 
once the data is in this framework, we can actually adjust the colouring and we can even turn things on off. So in our buildings here, we could actually turn them off if we don't want to see them, or you can adjust the transparency. So if we make them fully opaque or fully transparent, you can see how you can change that as well. So there's the, the, the four columns, the four chimneys of Battersea Power Station there. So, so even though we set a value of 25% uh, opacity, you can actually change it once it's in here, and you can turn things on and off, so you can turn the trees on and off as well. One of the other oops, nice things about this, let's just scroll that a bit. You'll see that the roads here are flowing over the over the river. They're actually going down to river level. So this is a this is a the way that the OS Terrain 5 data has been provided. So the roads aren't provided as heighted features. So it's actually got the height of the river underneath there. So that's why they look a bit funny, like they're, they're sort of bendy, bendy rivers, uh, bendy bridges flowing over the river. But the other nice tool you've got in uh, this plugin is the custom pane. So what we can do is choose, let's choose a blue colour. Oops. And set our value to be zero. Let's not take my blue colour. That's a nice blue colour. There we go. Okay, so we've got a, a custom plane in here. So it's using real-world units. So I've set this to a height of zero. So that's effectively sea level. And you can see the rivers are displaying nice in here. And we can interact with this still. We can pan and zoom it around. You can even make it slightly opaque so you have semi-transparent so you can see through it. But what with this, with this uh, plane, you can actually click and drag it around. So you can see the effect of changing that, that value on the actual ground. It's quite sensitive, so it's quite nice to be able to type values in. So with a one meter sort of sea level rise in this area, you can see the river's getting quite close to bursting its banks now. If we do another meter, so if we go up to three meters, you'll see it's actually gone. So we're starting to see the effect of what would happen with a, a relatively small uh, level of, of rise in the river there. And obviously, you can go further and, and flood large areas of London as you, as you model with this. Obviously, this isn't going to happen because the Thames barrier is further downstream, so all this area is protected. But you can see the value of the Thames barrier really, really easily from this, from a very small level of uh, river rise out of the area that's affected. So that's, that's just gone up four metres and already large areas are getting flooded. Okay, so yes, yeah, so this is a really nice plugin uh, from QGIS. Uh, QGIS is the, the sort of leading free and open source GIS available, and it runs on lots of different platforms. And the good thing about this plugin is it, it's chucked out an HTML file. So in this particular folder, there's all the files that you need to share this project with other users, so they don't need to be GIS experts. It's just a web page that you can interact with. If you are going to share it, just be aware that some of the data in, um, in Digimap is licensed, well, the vast majority is licensed, whether it's under the open license or um, an actual restrictive license, you need to check that so that you don't share data that's, that's licensed with people that don't have permission to see it. Um, and that's the same with ArcGIS Online as well, yeah, you can share that data with other people, um, but again, some of the data in there is licensed as well, so just be careful when you're creating these models and what you're going to do with them. So hopefully, apologies, we've overrun slightly there on the, uh, on the allotted time. There's quite a lot to show you, but hopefully you've seen in that uh, quick 40 minutes that it's, it's really simple. We did very little processing of that data in Digimap. We just used that data, took it as it was, and dropped it into these different applications, and we've run through four different uh, 3D models we've created. Uh, four different 3D models in a very short space of time. Um, if anybody has any questions, please do, please do ask. Uh, we'll stick around for a few minutes, but otherwise, thank you very much for attending, and I hope that was, uh, hope that was useful. You'll get an email in the next day or two with the links to the, uh, the slides and a recording of this webinar. But if you have any questions yet, please do fire away. Otherwise, thanks very much. <laughs>